my god! The whole house came apart! Pound for pound, tornadoes are the strongest weather force on Earth. With winds so powerful, they can toss trucks like trash. The rate of energy in just a typical tornado is several times the atomic bombs dropped on Nagasaki. So what would it take to snuff one out? Oh my God, I hope they're okay. You're looking at a tornado that's forming, strengthening, and then eventually dissipating. Cold air is the enemy to tornadoes. And we kill these tornadoes before they kill us. Or better yet, could we turn a twister's tremendous energy into a force for good? I'm John Rennie, and I'm a science writer on the hunt for new ways to level the planetary playing field. We've come a long way since the last Ice Age, but there's still one force we haven't mastered, and that's Mother Nature. Can we figure out how to hack the planet to save ourselves from natural disasters? And even if we can, does that mean we should? With the power levels involved, it would be awesome if we could harness that energy. I mean, with like a windmill, it seems like you'd get a lot of, you'd get that windmill going pretty fast. I don't think that's such a good idea, Brian. I remember reading that windmills have kind of a fail-safe worked into them, and they won't really go at more than 40 miles per hour. Also, I wouldn't want one to break off in the middle of a tornado and become some sort of horrible projectile. I actually read about this guy in Switzerland who plans to kind of make his own tornado and then harness the energy from it. Build a tornado? I'm not completely sure how it works, but it looks like he wants to try and trigger the formation of a vortex by shooting a bunch of microwave beams at the sky. A vortex? I like it. As hacks of the Earth go, that one sounds just crazy enough to work. After the break, I'll meet the man who believes the solution to our energy needs lies not in solar, nuclear, or wind turbines, but in highly controlled, man-made tornadoes. My quest to hack a tornado for power has led me to one of the most energy-conscious countries in the world, Switzerland. I'm going to track down the engineer Slobodan Tepic. He has an idea for creating an artificial tornado that could be used to tap into a virtually bottomless supply of energy. My hope is that we can provide clean energy for about a half million people. Wow. His idea would work like this. A high-powered microwave beam anchored in the base of this shell-like wind guide would create the warm updraft needed to trigger a vortex. The walls in the wind guide funnel the fast-moving winds through 64 high-performance turbines that harness the energy and distribute it into the grid, like a typical power plant. To demonstrate how microwaves could be used to create a tornado-generating updraft, Slobodan turned to his laser-equipped water tank. The beam comes through the center and actually monitor the vortex being generated. On this small scale, the heat transfer can't be seen with the naked eye. But if the upper plate, which represents the upper atmosphere, shows an increase in temperature, then there's hope for a microwave-induced tornado on a larger scale. And in just a few minutes, we can already start to see results. So this 0.3 reading that I'm seeing here at the top plate reflects the upper plate is being worn by the laser beam. Successfully heating the upper plate with the laser beam offers hope that someday we might be able to induce a tornado-like column of wind and harness its energy. But if it could be done, how big would a life-size tornado power plant have to be to meet the energy needs of half a million people? I guess somewhere on the order of 600 meters in diameter. So 600 meters, that's like more than a third of a mile across that. About that, mm -hmm. right. It's going to be a while before we can hope to power a small city with artificial tornadoes, and maybe even longer before we can dismantle the naturally occurring ones that routinely blaze a path of destruction across the United States. But the science behind some of these fledgling ideas seems solid. So it's not out of the question that tornadoes might one day be hacked. In 
until we're a little further along, I don't think I'm going to be looking up the real estate listings in Tornado Alley anytime soon. <laughs> Remember, Tornado Alley is, is really just the hardest hit area here in the United States. Tornadoes can hit anywhere. I am from North Texas, in the middle of Tornado Alley, and I have had to hide from my fair share of tornadoes. But I was pretty surprised to hear that there was a tornado in Brooklyn. Oh, lots. Twisters hate hipsters, as you know. <laughs> Hacking tornadoes is no simple feat, but the dangers of these fierce, fast-moving storms can't be ignored. And with random outbreaks threatening woefully unprepared areas, like this Brooklyn neighborhood was in 2010, the sooner we can stop tornadoes in their tracks, the better. And even if tapping tornadoes for their massive energy still eludes us, well, we'll keep hacking. Until then, get to safety.